So guys, in this video I didn't cut any mistakes that I may have made in English. So just you know, English is not my native language. Or neither I make cuts or edits where something took me longer than expected or it didn't go as good or as well as it's supposed to do. So that you can know nobody's perfect, neither me. Everybody can make mistakes. This is gonna be a guide for you to change the brakes especially the real ones, the discs and pads on the 8th generation Honda Civic. So feel free to enjoy the video. If you feel that this video helped you, consider subscribing or giving it a like. That would help the video to get more attention and would help me a lot. It would be really appreciated and also if you can. And also if you want to further support me, consider giving super thanks. If it is within your means, that would be appreciated as well. It would help me to grow the channel. So skip the talk and let's enjoy the video. Hey, your favorite YouTube wannabe mechanic is here again. Today we are going to change front and rear brake pads and discs on this UFO Civic. So let me get that up in the air and I will show you on two wheels how to do it one on the front and one on the rears as well. So without further ado, let's get into this one. So I have the quick check hooked up. It's connected to the car. I'm, not, I'm gonna lift it now. The first position is enough. So I realized that I only have the rear brakes, I mean the rear discs, so I'm gonna do the rear wheels only in this video, because the front discs are still in the transit, so let me jump into this one. In this video, I'm gonna guide you through all the necessary and important steps in order to change your rear discs and pads on this UFO Civic, so make sure you stay tuned in to be able to carry out this DIY job at home on your Honda Civic if you happen to own this kind of car or this model. So I did the other side off camera so I can prepare for the video. I'm gonna guide through all the steps you need. Here are the tools that you will need. It's not too much, a hammer, couple wrenches, sockets, and very important is the impact driver, which you can see over there. But I'm gonna show you in a couple seconds how to use that and what to, what for. As you can see, here are two retainer screws for the brake disc. The, those hold the brake disc on for to the wheel hub. So in order to remove, you can try with a regular Phillips head. But I don't really recommend it because you can strip this head off quite quickly, and then you have to drill it out or find under the method to remove this little screw which can make your life a lot more difficult than it should be. So I'm gonna use the impact driver and break it loose that way. I'm gonna show you that real quick. So here is the impact driver. It has two directions, left to loose, right tight. So basically we're gonna put it on the L because we are going to undo it or loosen this way. But you can check it easily which way it's gonna undo or loosen. If you take out the bit and push it against against the floor and when you push you see it is turning that way so that's the direction it's gonna break loose or that's the direction it's gonna turn so that way you can make sure you're not gonna tighten the, the screw but you're gonna undo it so put the bit inside of the tool place it securely inside of the head of the the screw and hit it with a hammer and as you can see it did break loose the, the screw let's repeat the step with the other one as well fantastic so now this way you didn't strip the head of the screws and you can un unscrew it with this one or or just a regular Phillips screwdriver it's up to you but this one made a lot, lot your life a lot more easier so from here the next step is 
to undo the caliper bolts these are size 13 hex bolts you can use a regular socket a regular ratchet with a socket but it requires quite a lot of effort to undo these bolts usually so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna use a swivel head ratchet with the socket and i'm gonna extend the arm out of the wheel arch with the jack handle and undo it that way or i'm gonna put it underneath the rear bumper and put the jack handle over it and then use the leverage and with less force i can break it loose a lot more easier well, let me show you that one how to do it or what i mean by that so have the ratchet and the jack handle ex extension on the on the board you can it, you can pull the arm here and undo it this way in the, this is the, re, the reason behind it if you don't have enough space underneath the car you didn't, didn't lift it high enough you can use this way or this method but if the car is high enough high enough up in the air you can use this one because from that from that side it will be a lot more easier to break it loose so let me show you now it is start to turn but with this guide pin as well so you'll need a size 15 wrench open and wrench here insert the wrench here counter hold it and then you can start undoing the bolt as well repeat the same step for the bottom bolt as well let me show you let me break that one loose as well From here you can just unscrew the bolts, remove them completely. You, you can then remove the brake caliper from the brake caliper holding bracket. So now it's time to remove the caliper. I'm gonna use a hook and hook it or hang it onto the coil spring. So put the hook into the guide pin guide pin bolt hole and hang it onto the spring so here have here you have another two bolts top and the bottom one which are holding the brake caliper bracket to the wheel hub so in order to remove these two bolts you will need a size 14 hack socket you can also use a penetrating fluid so that way it's gonna be easier to undo them or loosen these two bolts. Well, let me show you how to do it. So we can undo this one with the same method. Put the ratchet on with the socket and use the jack handle as a leverage. And you can undo it or you can use the single head ratchet and undo it outside of the wheel arch. But I choose this one because I have the car high enough off the ground. So let me undo this one. Okay, this one is loose. I'm gonna repeat the same step for the bottom bolt. So again, you can have the same setup. Have the ratchet with the socket on the bolt. Put the jack handle over the ratchet and then loosen the bolt. Once it's loose, you can remove the jack handle and start to do it with hand only. I'm gonna finish this step off camera, but you can guess the outcome. So once the bolts are removed or off of the brake caliper holding bracket, you can simply remove the brake caliper holding bracket. You can either remove the brake bolts before or after, but if you just pull it, it is off and now you can remove the brake caliper uh, now you can remove the brake pads from from it then make sure that you clean these shins as much or the best you possibly can because in these ones the pads are sliding so they need to have a free movement i will grease them with a copper spray later but i will show you that one as well it is very important 
so that they they the brake pads can move freely inside of these ones and this one also do, make sure you do the this one and this one as well otherwise you can have stuck brake pads or squeaky noise from your brakes at this point you can entirely remove the retainer screws which are holding the brake rotor or the brake disc to the wheel hub okay now you can remove the brake disc or brake rotor whichever you prefer to call it i'm gonna show you this method you would just grab a bolt which fits into the jacking hole you just thread it in and what's gonna happen when it's gonna get tight it's gonna push off the brake disc you have two holes you can do it like evenly or try only one side and you will see how it will loosen okay it's loose now and try to remove it it doesn't come further so I'm gonna hit it with a hammer from inside just like this then turn it hit on the other side as well and now I can remove the brake disc I will clean the wheel hub as well I'm gonna use a drill with a wire brush attachment I'm gonna clean it this way where you can you can clean it with a manual wire brush whichever tool you have access to so make sure it's it it is nice and shiny let me show you how to do it so clean the hub surface so after this you can twist back the brake piston you will need a brake piston rewind tool in order to be able to twist it or turn it back because you cannot just push it because it has to be twisted but before you do it make sure you open the brake fluid reservoir cap in order to let the pressure be able to come out of, of the, the reservoir I'm gonna show you where that is located inside or within or in the hood or underneath the hood so open the hood and underneath you can find the brake fluid reservoir here is the cap make sure you loosen it or open it and that way you don't need to fight the pressure which can which you can have here while pushing back or twisting back the brake piston so let's let's twist back that brake piston now so have a special tool prepared this is a brake piston rewind tool it rewinds it to the right direction or right hand direction you, you also have the one which is rewinds it to the left hand so when you turn it left it's gonna extend it's come off of of this head or socket that is usually typical for the work group cars but that doesn't matter now we're gonna use this one also choose an adapter which fits correctly inside of the grooves or notches of the brake piston you can see here are four notches so this one fits perfectly place the tool inside of the brake piston or the brake caliper so push the tool against the brake piston thread this head or socket all the way back you can until you start to feel resistance so now the tool is inside the brake caliper and it is tight and now you can start to rewind it basically you just turn it the initial turn can be quite difficult you need to make sure you always always make sure that the tool is tight as you can see it is turning what you want to avoid that you don't twist this rubber boot or dust cover if you twist it release the whole tool and, and make sure it is straight or it sits straight on the brake piston because you don't want to tear it or damage this rubber boot because if you do that you will need to replace this one as well or at least rebuild the brake caliper itself 
so you get the idea how to do it you need to twist it that way i'm gonna do that off camera and then i'm and i will be back once it is done show you how it looks like when it is done so now it is all the way back in how do you know that basically when you turn or twist you will start to feel a resistance resistance and then you will know that it's enough so we can remove the tool so let me remove that one so at this point we are halfway through the job the remaining steps are only the reverse what what we have done so far so basically put back the new brake disc put back the brake caliper guide and then the brake pads slide the brake caliper over and secure it and then finally just put back the wheel and you are done with the job so i removed these shins out of the brake caliper holding bracket and you can use a copper paste or a copper spray i'm gonna use a copper based spray i'm gonna spray the inside of it so that the brake pads don't stick and they can move freely put the new brake disc onto the wheel hub make sure you align the holes properly Secure it with the two retaining screws. It is perfectly enough if you just hand tighten them. Now you can put the brake caliper holding bracket in its place and then secure it with the two bolts. the brake pads into the brake caliper holding bracket the one with the wear indicator goes on the inner side and the other one without it goes onto the other side so just slide it into the shins all the way to the brake disc so that's it let's do the outer one like that now you can slide the brake caliper over and sec secure it with the two bolts So use an open end wrench or spanner sorry hold the inner guide and then tighten the bolt tighten it just now you don't want to go crazy tight on these ones because you can break off the head of the bolt repeat the same step in the top bottom one as well brake caliper guiding pins are working because the caliper is moving freely and now as a last step you can place or put back the wheel lower the car to the ground and you can drive off home also make sure you don't forget to close the brake fluid reservoir so now it's closed and after that you can close the hood or bonnet And the car is ready, ready to be driven off.